molecular and empirical formulae. In this video, we're going to introduce the idea of these two different ways of representing a given molecule or compound, and then also see how we can arrive at the empirical and molecular formula given certain kinds of data. Okay, so firstly, just to define these two terms, the empirical formula for a compound gives the simplest ratio of elements. So for small covalently bonded molecules, the empirical formula for a compound gives the simplest ratio of elements in that molecule. So an example of a possible empirical formula could be C H two O. The reason that this is a perfectly good molecular formula is because the ratio is one carbon atom to two hydrogen atoms to one oxygen atom. We can't reduce that ratio at all. If we had a formula like C two H four O six, this would not be a possible empirical formula because it's not the simplest ratio of atoms. The simplest ratio in this case would have been CH2O3. That is a perfectly good empirical formula because we can't reduce the ratio any further. The molecular formula is slightly different from the empirical formula in that it gives you the actual number of atoms of each element in a molecule. So one of the problems with the empirical formula is this empirical formula, for example, could correspond to a number of different molecules. It could correspond to a molecule that actually has the same molecular formula as empirical formula because it is actually a molecule made of one carbon atom, two hydrogen atoms, and one oxygen atom bonded together. However, it could also correspond to a molecule that has two carbon atoms, four hydrogens, and two oxygens, i.e. scaling up that empirical formula by two. It could also correspond to C3H6 O3. It could also correspond to C4H8 O4. All of these are possible molecular formulas that would all correspond to the same empirical formula CH2O. So the molecular formula gives you the actual number of atoms of each element. The empirical formula tells you the simplest ratio of those elements. Now, empirical formula can be found using this idea of the percentage composition of a given compound. Here we're referring to the percentage composition by mass. So what percentage of the mass of a compound is made up of a given element? So to find the percentage composition by mass of a given element in a compound, so for example, if we had methanol, CH4OH, we could find the percentage composition by mass of carbon. And that would correspond to what percentage of the mass of methanol is carbon. We could also find the percentage by mass of oxygen. What percentage of the mass of methanol is accounted for by the oxygen? The way we do that is we take the relative atomic mass of the element in question. We then multiply it by the number of atoms of that element in the molecule. And then we divide by the molecular mass of the molecule itself. We then multiply by 100 and we get the percentage composition of an element importantly, by mass. And we can actually, if we know the percentage composition by mass of each element in a molecule, we can find the empirical formula for that molecule. We're going to do that for this case, where we're told we have a molecule that has 72% by mass chlorine, 24% carbon, 4% hydrogen. So to calculate the empirical formula, you take each percentage and divide it by the relative atomic mass of the element it corresponds to. So 72, we're going to be dividing by the relative atomic mass of chlorine, which is 35.45. 24, we're going to be dividing by the relative atomic mass of carbon, which is 12.01. And 4, we're going to be dividing by the relative atomic mass of hydrogen, which is 1.01. That gives us 2.03, 2.00, and 3.96. And what we find is that when we divide those percentages by the relative atomic mass of the element, we get out numbers associated with our elements in question, in this case, chlorine, carbon, and hydrogen. And those numbers actually follow the same ratio as these elements do in the empirical formula. What you may find is a lot of time, because of the way we've rounded the percentages, the numbers don't come out as whole numbers. So in this case, we are at round 2.03, well, that's effectively 2 and 3.96, that's effectively 4. And carbon, actually, if we round it to three significant figures, does come out as exactly 2. What that tells us is that the ratio of chlorine, carbon, 
the hydrogen in our compound is 2 to 2 to 4. Obviously, our empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio, so it's actually going to be 1 to 1 to 2, which means our formula is C, Cl, H2. That's our empirical formula for the compound with this percentage composition. We can't tell you anything else about the compound unless we're told about the relative atomic mass of the compound. So if we were going to now try and find the molecular formula, we would first find the relative molecular mass of the empirical formula. That is the relative atomic mass of carbon plus the relative atomic mass of chlorine plus two times the relative atomic mass of hydrogen. That gives us 49.48 grams per mole. That means that if we were told that the molecular mass of the compound in question was 49.48, we would know that the molecular formula is actually just the empirical formula. However, if the molecular mass was, for example, 98.96, we could recognize that 98.96 is twice the mass of our empirical formula. So that would mean that our molecular formula is actually C2Cl2H4. We've got to double our empirical formula. Equally, if our molecular mass was actually 148.44, that is three times the mass of our empirical formula. So in that case, we'd be looking at C3Cl3H6. And effectively, what we're getting at here is that the molecular mass of this compound is going to be some multiple of the mass of the empirical formula. And however many times you need to multiply that up to get the relative molecular mass, that's how many times you multiply up your empirical formula to get the molecular formula. So another example of a calculation we can do is relating specifically to reactions that involve mass changes. And often we can relate these mass changes to the empirical formula of a reactant or a product. You should do examples of these in your labs, but an example we can do here is combustion of magnesium in air to form magnesium oxide, the formula for which is shown here. And you are asked to find the value of N and M, so our two unknowns in this formula, given that the mass of magnesium combusted is 0 0.56 grams. So our original amount of magnesium is 0 0.56 grams, and the amount of magnesium oxide collected at the end of the reaction is 0 0.925. So how we do this is we have to make some assumptions. Firstly, we'll assume all of the magnesium from the reactants is now magnesium oxide. The reaction has gone to completion. What that means is that 0.56 grams of magnesium has now been transformed into magnesium oxide. The mass of the magnesium atoms hasn't changed. The only thing that's changed is we now have a magnesium that is an, in a compound with oxygen rather than just on its own. So any extra mass that we've gained must be from oxygen atoms. What that means is that in our magnesium oxide, we have 0.56 grams of magnesium and 0 0.925 minus 0 0.56 grams of oxygen. That gives us 0 0.365 grams. That's our amount of oxygen in our product. That's our amount of magnesium. Now we've got to convert these into numbers of moles so we can actually relate the amount of magnesium to the amount of oxygen, the number of magnesium atoms to the number of oxygen atoms. So the number of moles of magnesium we can find from doing the mass of magnesium, 0.56, divided by the relative atomic mass, 24.31, gives us 0 0.0230 moles. The oxygen, we're taking 0 0.365 grams of oxygen. We divide that by the relative atomic mass of oxygen, which is 16.00. That gives you 0. 0228. And so what we have now have here is a number the number of moles of magnesium in our compound, the number of moles of oxygen in our compound. We can compare them to find what the ratio of magnesium to oxygen is. And in this case, we have 0 0.023 and 0 0.0228. So allowing for experimental error associated with the reaction not quite going to completion or any kind of impurities that might be in there. These two numbers are effectively the same, they're different by less than 1%, which means we have a 1 to 1 ratio of magnesium to oxygen in our magnesium oxide. As a result, we can say N is equal to 1, and then if we're balancing our equation, that means M is going to have to be equal to a half.
we therefore end up with the equation that we have. Magnesium reacts with half a mole of oxygen to give you one mole of magnesium oxide. Okay, key points to take home from this video. We saw that the empirical formula was the simplest ratio of elements, however the molecular formula actually tells you how many atoms of each element you have in your compound. Percentage composition by mass can always be used to find the empirical formula. In that case, you just divide the percentages by the atomic masses of each of the elemental species, and then the numbers you get give you the ratio of those elements. And then if we also know the molecular mass, we can figure out what the molecular formula is by how many times we have to scale up the mass of the empirical formula. We also saw that for reactions involving mass changes, we can convert those changes in mass to the changes in the number of moles of a compound, and then by looking at the ratios, we can determine things like the empirical formula or the molecular formula of a reactant or product.